Go on, Ozan. Go on, Ozan. Against this former club. And there we have it. What a win. <laughs> this is incredible. It's time for a win. Yorkshire takes on Hertfordshire, Tigers take on Hornets, and 16th takes on 13th. A win would be incredible, a draw would be a very, very decent point, and a loss is heavily expected. Today will be loud, yeah! hectic, and full of action. But with the Tigers missing some of their key players, including Oscar, Aaron Connolly, and Cyrus Christie, well, well I mean, Watford have, has made a sound in Jao Pedro, let, let's be honest. We're going to get battered. Yes, today is massive as Hull City take on Watford in the 43rd round of the most exciting and most competitive league in the world, the EFL Championship. With the Tigers on the back of a very difficult game to Middlesbrough. Now, when I say difficult, you get rid of that six-minute period where they scored all three and absolutely dominated us. I thought we played quite well. Now, for Watford, they're stuck in a bit of a rut. Only one win in the last six, losing to teams like Cardiff and Huddersfield. Their owner is banning people from the stadium for protesting. It's not looking good, and I hope the club does well in the future and sort of saves themselves from where they are at the moment. But as always, let's try and stay positive. Here's all the information you need to know about today's 3pm Saturday afternoon kickoff. Now, it's felt a long time since I've last said that. With Easter and everything going on, we're finally back to the proper standard kickoff times. Today, we take a look at the visitors and former Premier League side Watford. Watford have had an incredibly poor season as they currently sit 13th in the Championship with 15 wins, 14 draws and 14 losses. Although things are going wrong on the pitch, it's off the pitch which is even worse. Fans demanding more from players saying they don't give enough effort. Fans chanting and protesting against the owners as they say they're ruining the club. Today, Watford will hope to ease past the Tigers and hope to keep their playoff dreams alive. Now we move on to the history between the two sides and I must say it actually is really really close. Now they played each other on 45 occasions with the Tigers winning 17 times, Watford winning 15 times and respectively 13 games that ended in a draw. The last competitive fixture, you guessed it, 0-0 draw. I mean, surprisingly, we've had about 10 this season so most of them are. I mean it, I can't remember one thing that happened that game. There wasn't any great atmosphere, there wasn't any real talking points. It was just a boring game. Today, we're back at the MKM, we're at home, we're there to back the boys in black and amber, and hopefully we get the three points, which I think is very much possible today. Now, no offence to Watford fans or the club, but with how they're going at the moment, I think this is a great time to capitalise and get the three points. Well then, that's enough from me at my home. I will see you once we arrive in Hull. Come on, the Tigers, we can do this. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have fine. Uh, I'm with Marcus today. What are we doing, Marcus? To be honest with you, mate, I'm all right. I've, I've had some fried chicken, <laughs> and as a as a fatty, it was brilliant. It was great, and I'm gonna go for some more. Me too. <laughs> now then guys, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hello and welcome. We're finally back here at the MKM Stadium. It's a lovely day, it's a sunny day, and I'm very optimistic. Now, as I mentioned previously, Watford's club is in a bit of a state at the moment. I think we can all agree. Fans protesting, walking on the pitch, walking out the stadium, bringing banners, signs. They want the owner out. And today, I think it won't change for them. I hope we can get the win, and I think we can. With the lineup that's out, very, very strong. Speaking about the lineup, the time is exactly seven minutes past two. The lineup has just been announced, and let's be realistic, there wasn't going to be many changes, and there isn't. There's only one change. Ozan Tuvan comes in, Pelcast dropped, rightly so. I mean, I mean, if you saw the last vlog, that shot he had went for a throw in. Now that is embarrassing. Now, one thing I love about Liam Rossini is he's not afraid to drop the big and the greatest players. Now, Ebi Owe is back into the squad, but he's dropped Ryan Longman, he's dropped Ryan Wood entirely from the matchday squad and brought so sorry for the interruption, but it isn't a match day vlog without me making a mistake, and I have done, and I've got to come clean. Ryan Longman was injured, and Ryan Woods was on the bench. So, uh, yeah, carry on with the video and just laugh at me. A couple of youngsters. That's what we like to see. It shows dominance, and hopefully we can have that for a long, long time. But let's not beat around the bush. Here's your lineup to take on Watford FC. In goal, Carl Dilo. Today's right back and captain, Louis Coyle. Left back, Callum Elder. The two centre backs are Jacob Greaves and Sean McLaughlin. In midfield, Ozan Tufan, 
Harry Vaughan, Regan Slater, Jean-Michel Serry, and Adama Traore, and up front, Aliar Syed Manesh. So yeah, an incredible lineup. It's great to see Harry Vaughan making his home debut. He deserves the fans to chant his name around the MKM. I hope he scores today. Imagine that. Home debut goal. Absolute scenes at the MKM Stadium. Hopefully we get the win. What do you think, Holly? I think it's going to be 2-0. Uh, 2-0. Now, I would agree with you. Who's going to score? I think Harry Vaughan Brace. Harry Vaughan Brace. I tell you, you're optimistic. For me, I'm not going to go as close. I think it's going to be... I mean, I'm not going to go... As optimistic, I think it's going to be very close. I think it's going to be a 1 0 win, and I think it's going to be Malcolm Ebiori from the bench. <laughs> now, today we're joined by a very special guest, Leo. How are you? How are you? I am all right. Now, before we get into the game, I'd just like you to show the camera some very talented artwork that he's made. This man has painted Ismail Assar, she's an incredible and talented artist. I'm going to link his Instagram in the description. Give him a follow. If you have Thank any you suggestions or if you want him to pay for this for you, give him a message. So Leo, we faced Watford today in a very tough game. Now you look yeah. at Watford's team, arguably the best squad in the championship. I'm not too sure what's happening with them. A lot of things behind the scenes. But realistically, they should be playing better. What yeah. do you think the score's going to be today? Well, it's a weird one because Nero couldn't play for anything really. We're just playing to get higher in the league, but we're not really gaining anything. So I'm going for a 1 1 draw, box 1 1 draw. Who's going to get the girls? Well, I think Michel uh, Pedro. Michel Pedro. For them and uh, for us, Jacob Greaves. Jacob Greaves. Fair play to him. Well, I'll tell you something. Oh, that were, <laughs> that were an awful voice crack. That's usually there, I don't, I don't know what's going on there. But hopefully it brings some atmosphere in. I mean, it's slowly started to fill up, about five minutes till kickoff. Apparently there's going to be over 20,000 people here. Not too many Watford fans, but at the end of the day, it's a five hour trip. The club's not doing great, and you're not playing for a lot. So fair play to you all for travelling, I respect that. Well then, <laughs> where's it going? Will, it, will this be coming all right up? Well here we have it! Hull City take on Watford in the 43rd round of the championship. And that, that's still going, that's still going across the stands. Come on the boys. Now, by no means am I Elvis, but I gave it a good girl there. And it will be number 25 for Watford. To kickstart the first half. Come on, the boys. <laughs> They're not standing. They're not happy. They want their flag back. I don't know why it turns sideways, because I can't see a thing. Oh, come on, let us have a go. Oh, come on. Shocking behaviour, that. And I've mentioned this previously, but you just look at their squad. Ismail Lazar, João Pedro, you've got Daniel Backman. These are Premier League quality players. I, I, I can't understand how they're 11th in the championship. They've got Hassan Kamara as well. I mean, he was, he was wanted by top six clubs not that long ago. I mean, oh dear. <laughs> oh, hang on. Hang on. Whoa, I'll tell you what. What far off. Ten minutes in, I've got to be honest, not a lot is happening. I mean, Watford's controlling the ball. They've got most possession. They're just passing it around the back, finding opportunities. Very slow. And it's exactly what happened last time we played them. A nil-nil draw. Which I don't like to be, you know, negative. But I just can't see a lot happening today. I, I honestly can't. They've got a very good side. But they're just not using their players to the ability that we know they can play at. I mean, Ismail Asar was scoring a hat-trick against Liverpool not that long ago. Now he's battling against Callum Elder. Go on, Harry Vaughan. Top corner, Harry. Go on, Harry. Well, not for us. Go on, Harry. Go on, Harry. Go on, Harry. What a player. What a player. Go on. Oh. Harry. Regan. Red. Penalty. Come on. 
Oh, give it to Harry Bone. Please give it to Harry. It will be us and two band to take. That's so Oh, Just give it to Harry Vaughan. <laughs> give it to Harry Vaughan. Unless I was then just putting the keeper off and gives it to Harry Vaughan, who knows? Can you tell I like Harry Vaughan? Oh, sir. Too bad. Come on. Go on, Ozan. Go on, Ozan. Against his former club. There is it! <laughs> <laughs> Harry Vaughan against his former club the club that released him from his loan said he was not good enough too overweight and he buries it and there's a kid behind me screaming that's doing my head in <laughs> absolutely incredible as I said Watford signed him on loan a couple of seasons ago say he's too overweight don't play him then release him in January and he comes back and he scores against them he doesn't celebrate though, so fair play to the guy. Wow, I mean, what a start to the game that is. Now another thing, and a fun fact for you, Harry Vaughan was shipped out on loan to an 8th tier side in England at the start of the season. He was at a 5th tier side, and then they recalled him so he could sign for Hull City. Hull City signed him, and now he's playing regular in the Championship. That is incredible. What a story. And hopefully he gets a goal today. No, I, I feel he should have had that penalty. He worked it. He worked for it. He got the penalty. Should have taken it. <laughs> Why are they putting Harry at wall? I don't know. Oh. Well in Regan. Go on, Harry. Go on, Harry. Go on, Harry. <laughs> oh. oh, Sean McLaughlin's giving it straight to him. Cheers for the jazz hands, Leo. I'm much appreciated. <laughs> Go on, I was done. So they can hear the dinosaur noises in the background, but there's a kid doing my head in. Thirty-fifth minute, and I've got to be honest, I'm not too sure what to make of today's game. Very hit and miss. Not a lot going on. And it's very, very slow build-up. It's going on mainly in the middle of the park. And I'm just scared it's going to, you know, one of those games where Watford will get one chance, take it, because they have the quality. And we'll regret not pushing for two or three. Well, I can't... I can't be so negative all the time. We're 1-0 up against Watford. I mean, we're loving it. We're absolutely loving it. Hopefully we can get the win. And uh, we can go on with three points. Come on. Get the... Get the block in. Say fans, I hope this man signs a permanent. What a player. Someone help Gallum. Oh dear. Offside. 45th minute, one minute's been added on. And there was worrying signs as Ozan Tufan was being treated by the medical staff. He was holding his head and it looked quite serious, but he's back up on his feet. He's back on the pitch now. There has been a bit of argy bargy in between him and a few Watford players. He claims that one of them pushed him through a barrier. But then again, I don't think there's any bad blood between them. I mean, at the end of the day, I'd say only two or three players were actually at the club when Ozan was. So I'm not going to say there's any indecency or anything wrong. And there we have it. Half time and a 1-0 lead for Hull City. Let's get into it. Well, half time and what a, a boring half that was. Hull City won. Watford nil, and although the result is so positive at the moment, it's been such a boring performance. But let's not dip on the negative side of things. Let's go for the positive. A goal for Ozan Tufan, a former Watford man. They all said he was too overweight. They said he'd never play for the club again. Well, he's come back and he's scored against them, and that is brilliant. That's what you like to see. Now, we take a look at today's bench, and we've actually got some great selections. We've got Malcolm Ebioe, who's perfect for today's game. He would take the role against Hassan Kamara. And for me, Malcolm's just a little bit quicker. And Aliar is rapid. Let's let that be a fact. He is very, very quick. But I think Malcolm will do brilliant on that right-hand side. You've also got Xavier Simons, who just can't get in over Jean-Michel Serri, which is fair enough. But I think he deserves a few more minutes. Same with people like Greg Doherty. Unfairly, he should be a starter, but he just can't work his way into the team. The second half, then, what do we do? Well, it's a simple question. We pass it round the back. 
We get the 1 0 win. We go home with the three points. I know it won't be as simple as that because Watford, Chris Wilder will be digging into that Watford team just as we speak. I think he really wants to get the best out of them. I know he's only an interim manager, but potentially if Watford win all the games, they could still make the playoffs. Highly undoubtedly. Highly undoubtedly, highly unlikely, but it's still possible, and they need to win games like this. For a Hulls fan point of view, I'm happy just with a 1 0 win. Well, the Tigers are back out on top pitch, and I completely missed kickoff because I was having a fanta. I hope you can forgive me. <laughs> anyway, let's look for a good half. Well, he knows that. Go on, Adama, go on, Adama, go on, Adama, go on, Adama. Oh. Go on, Ali. Go on, Ali. Oh, fair play. What, what a challenge that is. Fair play. Fair. I, I've got to give respect where it's due. Oh, wait a oh, dear me. Oh, he's gone off at board as well. 60th minute, and both teams are passing it really well, creating opportunities, but just nothing has seemed to click for neither team. I mean,. I don't know how to explain it. It's been very evenly matched and neither team really deserve a win. But I don't want to draw. I'm happy with the result as it is. How are you feeling about it, Leo? What do you know how to describe this game? Really? Very not... boring. Yeah. It's an easy goal. Just to clarify, Leo is sat here because Phil, the person I sit next to, is at Michael Bublé's concert. I hope you're enjoying it, mate. I hope you have a good time because this isn't. This has not been entertaining. Good result, though. Yeah. It feels for a penalty. I've got to be honest with you, I didn't know what happened. We haven't given it, so we're all all right. I mean, with near enough the whole team going to argue with the ref, it probably was an handball, but then again, they could be trained to do that. You don't know. You do not know. <laughs> this is incredible. Watford, uh, Watford players are feeling for an handball, so every time someone touches the ball, the North stands are appealing for an handball. <laughs> oh, I'm loving this. Ball goes out. Jean Pedro goes to pick it up at the loudest on ball call you'll ever hear. Oh. <laughs> oh, this fan base. It's all kicking off now. Calamel has been dropped to the floor. Jean Pedro has pushed the ball, boy. The North fans are not happy, and I'm not going to say what they're shouting at him. We can probably have a guess. I haven't got a clue what's happening, to be honest. Cal Dallas got involved, now he's scrapping. Oh, dear me. Ball in. Oh, poor Harry. Go on, Ozan. Go on, Adama. Go on, Adama. Oh. Go on. Go on, Harry. Go on, Harry. Oh, what is that? 68th minute, double substitution for Hull City. Adama Triori comes off. Greg Doherty comes on. And Malcolm Ebioe comes on. And coming off is... Well, they don't have to take the time, do they? Aliyah Simonish. Well played, Aliyah. Go on, Harry. Well played, son. Go on, Malcolm. That's our ball, that's our ball. <laughs> He's not an happy chap. 75 minutes, the atmosphere is really livened up. I mean, even the West Stand is singing. Oh, well, I wouldn't go singing, chanting. But anyway, there's a double substitution again for Hull City. Ozan Tufan comes off, Demetrius Pelkas comes on, and Xavier Simon comes on, and replacing him will be... John Mikel Seri. Once again, more fights happening. Harry Vaughan being shoved to the floor. He's only little by João Pedro. Fans chanting off. Oh, I don't think it's a red card, personally, but you never know. And Malcolm's on the floor as well. I, I don't know what's happening. I really don't. Here's a big reveal. I see a yellow card. And Malcolm's got a yellow as well. 
it's all happening here. Eightieth minute, and I haven't really spoke a lot this half because not a lot's happened. I mean, in terms of fighting, it's brilliant. It's like watching Green Street, but in terms of the performance, it's been quite dire. I wouldn't say dire, just boring. Now, the thing about Watford is I'm not entirely sure what's going on with the club. I mean, they haven't played great today. I mean, if you got rid of the name of the players, like Ismail Assar and João Pedro, and they were just, I don't know, Gary and Steve, they haven't played great. I don't know, they're at something with a club. Maybe they're just giving up hope this season, but you can see the qualities in there, but it's like they're not giving it their all. Do you know what I mean? It's very strange to see. Oh, no. Oh, Carl Darlow, what a save. To be honest, that would feel so unfair if Watford score because I don't think they've been the better team. That would be gutting. We love Carl Darlow. I really hope he stays on a permanent. I know I've said this many times this vlog, but hopefully if I keep saying it, it might happen. That's just incredible. I think that's the fourth game in a row. We've had 20,000 people at the MKM. And there's a substitution. Harry Vaughan coming off, getting a standing ovation from the whole City crowd. And coming on, Ryan Woods. Well played, Harry. We've got a pitch invader of some sort. It, it, I don't know what it is. I hope we're going to get ball here. Well, I've touched it. Come on, oh, Malcolm. Oh, oh my God. You can't do that. A bit of manhandling going on. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, no. Oh. oh, what a block. Jacob Greaves might have just saved City there. 90th minute, four minutes of added time. My heart is going. I, I'm not entirely sure what to think of it. I don't know where they put four minutes on. I'll tell you what, I'm embarrassed. The ball came over. I grabbed it. I went to throw it back onto the pitch and I missed. I hit the fence and it bounced back. How poor is that? I'm, I'm, I'm totally embarrassed. I'm very embarrassed over it. Can't be long left and this would be an incredible win. I know it means nothing in the grand total scheme of things, but a win against Watford would be brilliant. The teams who've won this season, we can be proud. It's been a decent season. It's been a decent year. We could concede here, actually, because Ryan Woods has just given the ball. <laughs> the ball's just been thrown up. Waste as much time as possible. Oh, what a win this will be. Slow run up, Carl. Get as much minutes as you can. Fair play to the Watford fans that travel. As I said, I feel really bad for you and the club. I hope things get sorted soon and you're back up to winning ways and back to the Premier League where you belong. And there we have it. What a win. Hull City. Well played, lad. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen. What a result. What a performance. And what a team. Hull City won. Watford nil. And a goal. Thanks to Ozan Two fans' penalty. Make sure Hull City collects all three points from the MKM Stadium. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, and I think anyone who was at the match can agree, that were one boring game, even with Hull City collecting all three points, there just wasn't a lot to it. I mean, yes, the fighting was interesting, the North Stand was incredible, shouting handball every time a Watford player touched it, because they were arguing about it. But apart from that, the whole 75, 80 minutes without the fighting and the action... It was just a boring game. I mean, Watford could have easily won that. They'd taken their chances. They've got the players. They've got the quality to. And it amazes me how they've got João Pedro and Ismail Assar, who are arguably probably the best players in the championship, and yet they can't win against Hull. On to the fans, and I briefly mentioned them already. The North Stand was absolutely cracking today. I mean, the banter they have, it's phenomenal. And I'm proud to be a Hull fan. Now, what happened was João Pedro picked the ball up and everyone shouted handball. And that was because um, apparently Watford players were claiming for a handball and they were making a massive deal out of it. So the North Stand decided to take it into their own hands and uh, mimic them. On to the next fixture. And it feels sad to say this. There's only two more games left of the season. One and the next one, Swansea at home. Again, another team, not a lot to play for, but they'll give it everything. They've got that star man, Joel Perot, who haunted us when we went to Swansea. <laughs> that was probably the worst away game of the season. Getting up at one o'clock in the morning and bringing 150 fans. And then after that, we've got Luton. And fair play to everyone who got tickets. We got two tickets. I'll be taking my mother. Lovely, she's looking forward to it. But apparently you can't sit in the first three rows or else you can't see the pitch. Just before I finish this outro, I would like to say a massive shout out to Robbie and Billy. 
I met them outside the MKM. They've been in a couple of vlogs before. Fair play, dedicated fans, and thank you for all the support. Again, thank you all so, so much for watching. If possible, please like, subscribe, and turn on notification bells. It would mean absolutely everything to me. It's been a pleasure taking you to the MKM, and what a fantastic win that was. I'll see you all next Saturday for Swansea at home. Up the Tigers!